Hello, and welcome back. Today we're going to do a lesson on a really cool uh, technique. It's kind of a chord substitution technique, different from our last lesson, which was chord substitutions within a major key. Here we're going to take chords from a different key and transplant them into our major key for um, harmonic movement and tension and release. Remember, music is about tension and release. Using chords, the harmony, to create a emotional effect on the listener. And this can be done very well with a device called secondary dominance. So we know that in a major key, we only have one dominant chord, the five chord. So for this example, we're going to be in C, a C major seven. And our five chord would be D, G dominant seven. Okay. But we're going to pull other dominant chords from other keys other than that G dominant seven. That'll be our primary dominant chord. The five of the one, right? The one's the root chord. The G seven's the five of the one chord. So we're gonna have a real simple harmonic progression, a nice descending line. We're gonna go from the C major seven up to the three chord, the E minor seven. And then descend down a whole step to the D minor 7, the 2 chord. And then descend down another whole step back to the 1 chord, G major 7. Perfectly decent little progression. 1, 3, 2, 1. So it's okay, it's kind of, it's decent, but it's not anything to write home about. No one's gonna listen to that and get, you know, emotionally connected to that chord sequence. So we're gonna use secondary dominance to spice things up and create some tension, as well as another descending line. This line is descending in whole steps, and our secondary dominance are going to descend in whole steps and echo the descending pattern and reinforce it. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna start with our one, C major. Now remember, it's all about the chord you're going to. That's what allows us to suspend the harmony and pull a dominant chord from another key because it's all about the chord that you're resolving to. So from C major, seven, we're gonna to go to E minor seven. But on the way, we're going to make a detour at the 5 of that E minor 7. So G is the 5 of the 1 chord, the C major 7. So what is the 5 chord of E minor 7? We went to the key of E. B would be the 5th. Just count up. E, F, G, A, B. That's my 5. Now, we know from note placement that here's my E. So the fifth exists above it, and the fifth exists right below it. Now because of the, the B string being tuned differently than the rest of the strings, this is going to allow us to play our dominant chords with one shape, take that exact same shape, move it up, and it's gonna become a minor seventh chord. So you only need really one chord shape to play all these kind of secondary dominants leading into minor chords. So from our one, we're gonna to go to the five of three, which will be B7, B dominant seven, which would lead into E minor seven, same chord shape, just moved up a string. And then remember we're descending from that E minor down to the D minor. So what's the five of D minor? 
A dominant seven. Same chord shape. A dominant seven, which leads into D minor seven. Same chord shape. Now we're gonna go to G seven. So we've got to take this D minor seven and turn it into a D dominant seven, the five of the G. And that's gonna to lead to, which then leads back to the top of our verse, back to the one. So instead of having We now have Chances are you've heard that chord progression. It's, it's used in just countless songs because it's a nice descending pattern and it just sounds so good. Root, five of three, three chord, five of two, two chord, five of five, five chord, back to the one. So let's take a look at the tension and release that's happening in that progression. We were in the key, right? We're playing the one. And had we gone straight to the three, there's a tiny, tiny bit of tension simply because we're moving away from the one and we're changing tonality from major to minor. But it's still within the key, so it's not a great amount of tension. But, if we play that one, and then we play the five of three, oh, that's tension. It's a chord from a different key, it's a whole different kind of tonality, and it's a dominant chord, which the listener knows. They know in their ear that chord wants to resolve somewhere. So we establish our key, we go to the five of three, ooh, big tension, we release it, Right? Then we set up some more tension, but we're moving closer back to the root so the tension is less. And then we resolve that tension, and then we create a little more tension, but again, not that much. And now we're back home, where everything resolves back to the one. So that is a great way to set up tension and release within harmonic movement using um, secondary dominant. Another thing you could kind of do um, is let's say let's do a two, five, one. Real simple progression, same key, D minor seven. G seven. C major 7. Two, five, one. Simple 2 5 1 progression. Let's spice that up. Throw some secondary dominance into that bad boy. So we're starting on the D minor seven, and then we're gonna make that the five of five, D dominant seven. And then 
to the 5, G7, and then to the 1, But now check this out. We're gonna sneak in another secondary dominant leading into like the second verse, let's say, which would we would play this A dominant seven again to set up the D minor seven, the two. So let me show you a cool little trick. We'll do a little ascending trick. So we start on our two, go to the five of five, Go to the five, go to the one. Now go to the five again. Go up a half step. You can even slide into it. See how that sets up the D minor. It's kind of so you're down on the one, you've just ended the verse. So let's, let's look at a, a one, four, five. I'm gonna play triads, because this still works with triads. You don't have to play seven chords. Um, and it's, it's a little bit easier doing it down here. I'm gonna go to the F chord, the four, and instead of going down to the four, I'm going to go up and play that F right there. Like that, the upper portion of the F major triad. So here's our one chord. To our four chord. To our five chord, to our one chord. So instead of going from the one to the four, I would go from the one to the five of four. And the five of four is a C dominant chord. So I go from C major to C7. Just put my pinky down on the minor 7th and now I've got C dominant 7 which then harmonically sets up the 4 chord, the F. And then I go to the 5 and then back to the 1. If I want to, I could do throw in that D dominant 7 as well to set up the 5 chord, 1 chord, Right? G major, 5 of 4, G dominant 7, 4 chord, go to the 5 of 5, D dominant 7, now go to the 5 chord, G7, and then back to the 1 chord. So real easy, you know, people think secondary dominance are a difficult thing to understand or whatever. They're super easy once you get your head around them. And because of the way the guitar is laid out, especially if you're moving from dominant chords on the E string to, their relative, to the minor chord that they're moving towards on the A string, it's all the same grip, it's the same hand shape. So there you go. There's been a quick lesson on secondary dominance. Hope that's helpful for you. Start applying that to your own songwriting. Or if you're playing other people's music, you know, and they're playing a one, four, five, feel free to throw a secondary dominant or two, or three, you know, into that progression to liven things up, you know. And I was playing them um, like a full bar, you know, one, two, three, four, Four, two, two, three, four, three, two, 
three, four, four, two, three, four. But let's say you don't have that. Let's say the progression is one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You just simply sneak the dominance in on the three. Don't wait until another bar. So I would do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, just a little bit quicker progression. So you can just kind of stick them in there wherever you need them. Hope you guys like this lesson. Hopefully it was helpful. Thanks for stopping by.